left for dead. The man accused in a local homicide goes before a judge. What authorities say happened in a South Coast parking lot. Bickering over the border, fund the wall, or the Trump administration may shut down the entire southern border. That's the message this morning from the president. Travel troubles. It's just rain here, but snow across some of the country's busiest airports. It's making it hard to make the most of this popular vacation week. Thank you for turning to 10. This is Southern New England's news leader. Good afternoon, I'm Megan Mooney. Whiteout conditions are blanketing roadways and runways causing trouble across the Midwest. If your travels take you through that region of the country, well, beware that your flights may be delayed, even canceled. Minnesota and the Dakotas are a winter wonderland, but the snow created treacherous driving conditions and grounded flights. The snow reached as far south as New Mexico. But a little east of there, it was the water wreaking havoc. Major metropolitan areas like Houston and Austin, Texas, both dealing with serious flooding. And while the rain is expected to get heavy at times in our area, should you need emergency help, a critical outage with the country's 911 system has been fixed. Massachusetts State Police say it affected those who tried to dial 911 from a cell phone in the Bay State, but as of about 845 this morning, repairs had been made. Now we'll turn to Kelly Bates, and who's here now, and we can get an expecting on uh, what the rainfall is going like. Well, we have had the rain moved in, and now as we go into the afternoon hours, we're expecting the rainfall rate to increase. So we have some fog in place, and visibilities have been fluctuating. At times, we haven't been able to see this bank of trees from this vantage point. But at this check-in, we do have visibility that's a little bit better. So uh, we have increased up to five-mile visibility in Smithfield. So visibility may be an issue that factors into your late commute. It may mean that you will want to leave yourself a little extra time to get where you're headed. Here's the area of heavy rain just sitting on our doorstep up just waiting to roll in and once it gets going it's going to be giving us not only areas of heavy rain but it also is going to be with us for some time as a result we will likely see rainfall totals on the order of an inch in some areas if not more and we're expecting more along south coast areas of south county here models are calling for the potential of an inch and a half but with temperatures that are going to hold in the 50s through the afternoon you bet we're going to keep this as a rain event we're not going to do any mixing in fact we're going to be keeping the 50s as we go into the weekend and we'll talk more about that weekend forecast and drying out coming up in just a couple minutes Megan Kelly thanks and now we'll just take a quick look at the roads because why not <laughs> taking a look at your commute right now on 146 and 95 southbound as you make that merge it seems to be pretty steady right now the flow of traffic that is and traveling at the speed limit the roads they just look damp just take caution as you head out perhaps for the lunch hour and whenever there's some sort of major weather event that's in southern New England Please, we'd love for you to share your photos or videos with NBC10, just as long as it's safe, of course. You can snap a photo and send it to 10 just through the mobile app, or you can also click chime in, and that's on turnto10.com. Now, in other news, the man arrested in connection with a fatal shooting in Dartmouth goes before a judge today. Authorities say the victim was found shot in a car in a parking lot, uh, in a hotel parking lot, rather. This was on Saturday, and NBC10's Jared Pelletier, he's live now outside the court with details. Jared. Megan, good afternoon. That suspect, 48-year-old Robert Rose Jr., is here at the courthouse right now. He has not faced a judge yet, but we are told the arraignment should be taking place any minute at this point. He is accused of killing a 37-year-old man last Saturday in the back parking lot of that hotel you mentioned, the Regency Inn and Suites in Dartmouth, which sits right off of Fonts Quarter Road. Investigators have charged Robert Rose Jr. with murder and misleading police after they took him into custody last night over at the Dartmouth Police Department. Now, the victim in this case has been identified as Joseph Tavares, again, 37 years old from Fall River. Investigators said they found him suffering from multiple gunshot wounds in a car. Many of his loved ones are here at the courthouse right now. They say the two men did know each other very well, and they are glad, despite their grief, that somebody has been arrested in connection with this case. We'll have the latest on this this evening, but for now, we're live in New Bedford this afternoon. Jared Pelletier, NBC 10 News. Jared, thank you. Providence police still have not made any arrests in a Wednesday morning homicide. Meanwhile, a memorial is growing at the site where 31-year-old David Long was gunned down on Fountain Street. Police believe the shooter was trying to rob the victim and that the two men knew each other. 
A man trapped under a vehicle in an accident last week remains in critical condition. The Providence Journal reports a food truck customer got stuck underneath a vehicle when an SUV hit the back of a truck. This was on Saturday at Thurber's and Pr Prairie Avenues. 40-year-old uh, Desiree Cialis was charged with DUI and several traffic violations. Now, only on 10, the dash cam video that shows a car barreling down a New Bedford street only moments before it crashes right into a home. No one was seriously hurt, but officials say that the home, it's a total loss. In fact, it took hours yesterday to board up the house at Park and Somerset Streets, and the driver, a woman in her 60s, says her accelerator got stuck. She was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be fine. Well, there's no end in sight to this fight over a border wall, thus no end in sight to the partial shutdown. As, NBC ten, as NBC's Scott McFarlane reports, the president's latest threat calls for shutting down the southern border. The Senate stands adjourned until 10 a.m. on Monday, December the 31st. At the Capitol, Congress has punted all proceedings and votes until at least next week which means the hallways here are as empty as those in many of the nation's federal buildings and national parks, many of which will remain closed today from California through the East Coast. I hope it doesn't take weeks. Uh, it's been far too long for the government worker. President Trump this morning tweeted about the shutdown, stating we will be forced to close the southern border entirely if the obstructionist Democrats do not give us the money to finish the wall and change immigration law. Both sides are digging in on the seventh day of this impasse, neither showing a willingness to budge in a dispute over whether to set aside $5 billion for a border wall. The one thing that we should all want to do, no matter what our political philosophy may be, is to keep the lights on. Meanwhile, the nation's Homeland Security Secretary travels today to the border after the death of a second migrant child this month. Eight-year-old Felipe Gomez died en route to a hospital after being taken into immigration custody. Scott McFarlane, NBC News, Washington. Today's the deadline for candidates to register for the District 68 House seat in Rhode Island. As of yesterday, June Speakman and John Hanley, both from Warren, had filed papers. There could be more names by the 4 p.m. deadline, but right now a primary would be held February 5th and the special election on March 5th. Originally elected to the position, Lofton Asciendo announced that he would not take the oath of office after he admitted he lied about a campaign mailer. Well, plans to sell recreational marijuana in Attleboro just got scrapped. Owners of Ashili's Inc. on West Street had hoped to apply for a retail permit, but the Sun Chronicle reports they ran into serious opposition from neighbors Thursday. Community outreach meetings are required by the state's Cannabis Control Commission as part of the, per, uh, per, the permitting process. Excuse me. Just last week, a retail pot shop opened up in Wareham. That's the state's fourth such store in just over a month. Now, the Rhode Island ACLU is joining other groups in uh, an opposing a proposed ban of medical marijuana at the Veterans Home in Bristol. The State Department of Human Services wants to ban all illegal drugs, even though there are some that are proven to treat something the Veterans Home deals with a lot, PTSD. Nope, when you see this, this was not an alien invasion, though it looks kind of like that. And it was over New York last night. A transformer explosion in Queens forced a ground stop at LaGuardia Airport. This, despite the, elect uh, the electrical failure, there weren't many power outages, which is why it only took about an hour for the airport to resume normal services. All terminals, they were impacted, but the traffic was not up in the air. Now ahead at noon, rescued from the rubble. A 150-year-old Massachusetts church burned to the ground after it was struck by lightning. Now we've learned demolition, demolition crews have managed to unearth history. And the heartbreaking reason a Texas woman is so determined to reunite a stuffed bear with its rightful owner. We've got a lot of things to think about looking ahead. Not only today's rain, but the weekend, too. And then there's New Year's Eve. Well, we'll take care of all your forecast needs coming right up. Closed captioning brought to you by Cardi's Furniture and Mattresses. Online or in stores, nobody beats Cardi's guaranteed lowest Nairobi prices. Nobody.